we were about to scrimmage alter. And so the game went fine. I was playing corner and wing, which is like a receiver running back. And I, on the last play of the, on the last play of the game, I, we did a sweep where I took, it was like a pitch and I went in motion and I caught the pitch and I don't exactly remember the play, but I, I guess somebody blocked a guy out that they weren't supposed to. And so I had to cut up and I got hit by like four linebackers and I felt something pop and I, it felt like I just opened my eyes and I just kind of saw my foot like right up here. And then I fell down and it didn't hurt at the time. I, it, I just got, I just screamed because it was kind of shocking. And I guess when they rolled me over, I was laying on my leg. And so they rolled me over and it just kind of fell down. They called the ambulance. They didn't know for sure if it was a broken leg. Not everybody knew for sure. They thought it might be dislocated knee or torn ACL or something like that just because my knee bent up, but it bent from my thigh. So I was pretty, I, I knew pretty well that it was a broken leg. And so the ambulance got there and they had to give me morphine on the field because it was such a bad injury. And they got me on the cart, which was a lot more painful than the actual break. They had to calm me down and get me to breathe evenly because I was hurting pretty bad. Then they got me in the ambulance. None of that hurt. It was kind of a bumpy ride to the hospital and that kind of hurt. I remember laying there, I was really thirsty, but I couldn't drink anything because I had to go. I had to, they didn't know when I could do the surgery and so I couldn't drink anything. And so I remember the next thing I remember is they had to put a screw through my shin and they had to get it all the way through and out the other side and they had to tie a string to it and attach it to weights and hang it over the edge of the bed so it would pull my leg down. And I don't remember them putting the shin, the uh, rod through my shin, but I remember them pulling on it and that was the probably the most painful part of the accident. The room was really nice and they, they gave me food. A lot of my friends have brought me food too, so I got a little of both. I still didn't eat very much that day. I didn't get to drink very much. I had to stop eating earlier, early in the day because I finally got a sur I got my surgery about one o'clock, somewhere in the afternoon, and I they took me down there, and I was kind of nervous. My friends came in there and they gave me my jersey and they took pictures with me with my jersey. So that that was good. It was comforting and. I went into surgery and everything was good. They said it all went fine, went, went very well. I don't remember how long it was. I don't, I don't remember the time at all. I feel like he told me a lot before the surgery, but I don't remember very much of it. He told me that he was gonna put a rod on my leg and there was gonna be, after the surgery, surgery he told me again, there was a rod on my leg and there were screws on my knee and not my hip, and they inserted it at the hip. And they, I still have the scars and the staples. So I went into surgery and I had Dr. Herbenik as my doctor. And I found out later that he was the best doctor to have there because he was, he was the very best at treating those injuries. And I got that connection because Amy Bernard called him as soon as I left the field saying that this was a very brutal injury and he needed to take my, take my case. It, the accident happened on a Wednesday, I think, and they came in Friday morning, the day after the surgery, and they told me I was gonna be walking on crutches. They were a little hard to use at first. I'd never been on crutches before that and I walked out of the room. My coaches were there to watch me, actually. So they, there was not all of them, but a couple were. And they were there and they watched me walk out of the room and walked down the hallway. It's still difficult, but they were, the, they were all there for me, all the nurses were. And 
I got into a wheelchair and they took me out of the hospital and then we got in the car and rode back to my house which was it was all right I, I still had to get used to the crutches when I got there and I had no real problems at the house I didn't do very much I didn't walk around very much and I started physical therapy at one of Miami Valley satellite offices about a week later. I went to the satellite office for about seven weeks, something like that. I went once a week and they gave me workouts to do at home and those helped a lot. I finally got back to school. I missed most of the football just trying to get caught back up. And finally, by about the sixth or seventh week in the season, I got caught up and I started going to practices again. I was just now finishing up with the physical therapy at the satellite office. And I was, I was at football practice, I was moving around. I was actually running a little bit. At, by this time I was running, I was able to run a mile and I was starting to run, get faster and I was throwing and catching the football. And that, after that, I started going to Amy Bernard and doing a little training there, just mostly continuing what I left off with at my old physical therapy. I was trying to wrestle, but I did all the conditioning, all the lifting, whatever, and I ended up finding out I wasn't gonna be able to wrestle not because the doctor told me I couldn't, but just because of the pain. It was too much. The conditioning helped me a lot for baseball and once I got started with that, because once I finished the wrestling season, I went, I went to Amy Bernard almost every single day after school. And so she took me through healing my leg and just, we started from the bottom and just worked up. And I worked on strengthening my thigh and my knee and everything that would help me. And we finally started baseball conditioning in, I want to say, like January or February. And I was doing running, I was lifting, I, was, I had a hard time squatting, but nothing, nothing that was too bad. I could still lift weights, upper body, and I could still run with them. The hardest thing was trying to keep an even pace when I was running because I was limping a little bit. But eventually it worked out well. and. After the conditioning and tryouts, I made the team. I played outfield, so I was running fine. I was running the base as well. I was pinch running when I could. And I never really had any problem with it. The only problems I might have had was stretching out, and that was just because the muscles were tight. But other than that, I started a lot of games. I played a lot during the season. I, don't, I played every single game, and not, a, not everybody got to do that. So. That was, that was very good. I was very thankful Amy called and got me to Miami Valley in the trauma center and got me to her Benick because he did very well with my surgery and handling me after the surgery. And I was very thankful he didn't put me in a cast because it kept me moving. And he, it helped me get back into sports quicker, I think, because I did, it wasn't keeping my leg immobile. And the nurses were all very nice in getting me treated and taken care of and they helped me with knowing what to do when I'm at home and how to handle it on my own with the crutches and everything. And then once having the satellite office instead of having to go to Miami Valley because that would have been a long drive and on the road. And so they helped me out very well there and I was once I got back to school, I had the trainers who also work at Miami Valley, and they helped me out just as much as the uh, as the rehab office did. So uh, they helped me out throughout the year, and actually still helping me get just to keep going with football and all my sports. And so I'm very very thankful they I had the care that I did.